week's music Monday is the gibberish edition with Bruno Sus. Baby, I'm sorry. Baby, I'm sorry. We got the better. Conqueror of kitties and devourer of teenage hearts finally makes a comeback. First off, for those of you who don't know, Jin Young, who was the leader of Velasa, wrote the lyrics and composed a song. Gotta say, for a band that's still fairly new, that's pretty darn impressive. It's times like this that we're really sick of people saying, Oh, K-pop idols aren't talented, they're just dancing puppets. But here we have a great example of idols not only performing a song, but also in contributing to its creation, and that's pretty awesome. And so, to all of you people who insult K-pop, <laughs> Otherwise, we're a bit torn about the song. I mean, there are a lot of things that we like about it, but there are also a lot of things that we don't like about it. For instance, I think most people can agree that the song is just a bit too auto-tuned. Like, distractingly auto-tuned. We do like the sound of the song, though. It's definitely what I wanted from Balasa. It really sounds a lot more mature and shows that the band is growing up out of their cute quirkiness into some more serious songs. We appreciate that. Now, when Balasa first came out, it didn't really dig their cutie boy image because you guys already know I'm not really into cutie boy images. My heart was not devoured because it's no longer teenaged. But when Beautiful Target came out, I really hated it at first and then suddenly became extremely addicted to it. It had a fun beats, crazy random rap sections, and ridiculous but really catchy English phrases that zoom zoomed my heart like a locket. I had finally accepted Velasa as a light-hearted and fun band. But then I saw their comeback video. Velasa's like crazy, quirky, silly energy was suddenly being channeled into like like an angsty boy band, which we have so many angsty boy bands already. Where's the, the crazy set with like ridiculous props? Where are there like funky, crazy costumes where you can't tell what's going on? I think a, a small part of me died on the Zooms in the Locket set. In fact, not only am I not prepared for Veloss's new approach, I don't really believe it. With the exception of Baro, who is rapidly becoming my favorite member, I feel like the other members were kind of struggling a bit at acting and conveying their emotions. As happy singers and dancers, they're totally fine, but as like mopey depressed sad actors, I really just don't get that vibe. I mean, right at the beginning of the video, look at when Jin Young leaves that room. He's supposed to be conveying like pain and like depression and sadness, but it actually looks like he might be giggling or like smiling at something. Like maybe there was some inside joke happening, but right off the bat, I was like, um, I have no idea what kind of emotion he's supposed to be conveying. But maybe it's not meant to be convincing. Maybe there's another side to the story. I think I figured out why Belasa are acting so sad and strange. Now, this might be the most obvious reason, and I'm sure that every single one of you has noticed this as well. But Belas is being held captive by a crazy fangirl who's had her heart conquered and is now taking a turn at fondling all the members and forcing them to pretend that they're happy with her. The conquerors have been conquered. Remember back in our first review of Belasa when we complained that they clearly gave away the location of their secret hideaway? This crazy chick has found their secret location, kidnapped them, and is now holding them captive in her own secret Belasa hiding place. She's learned from the mistakes of TVXQ and she will not let Belasa escape that easily. No more laser fields, no big bathtubs. Look, all the signs are there. Number one, they all live in the same apartment and are all in the same band, yet they are all dating the same girl? That is totally impossible. Sure, maybe two guys could date the same girl and not know it, but five members of the band deeply involved with one girl and nobody knows that? I'd like to believe that Belasa isn't that gross. See, if I found out that the girl that I was deeply in love with was playing me for every other member of my band who was also deeply in love with her, I wouldn't really be moping over her. There'd be no crying. Revenge and only revenge. Baby, I'm Sorry, I filled your car with shaving cream I slash your tires and set them on fire And so, when you take a closer look at the video You see that their really bad acting actually makes sense When the members are alone, they look sad and exhausted But as soon as they're with the girl, they're like Hey, hey you! I'm so happy to see you again
which would explain why they're acting so bad at being happy. Secretly, they're broken on the inside. Other signs of this cruel captivity. We mentioned that at the beginning of the video, we see Ji Young leaving his room, definitely attempting a jailbreak. But we can see that he's almost like laughing or smiling. Now, w why would he be doing that? Is this a bad acting job? No, I don't think so. He's got the crazy laughs. Why? Because he just noticed in his attempt to jailbreak that the stairwell he was gonna use to escape actually leads to nowhere. It actually leads up into like, a half window. Cruel, cruel joke by this evil captor. He's totally sealed in the small space. What's that? You say that you saw him come in with like baguettes and bags and stuff like that. Really? Because we never saw him leave. Because he never did. Crazy Girl is simply making him hold all these bags and hold the baguettes being like, let's play boyfriend, girlfriend. Carry my stuff while I swirl my bags lovingly. Yay. Look at the 48 second mark. Look at his eyes. Do you know what's flashing through his mind? Beating her to death with one of those baguettes. 54 second mark. I could just bludgeon her to death and, and make a break for it, but I can't leave my bandmates. I can't leave my bandmates behind. Take a look at two minutes and 35 seconds. We see seeing you with his hands around her face. So close to strangling her and getting my freedom. But no, seeing you is too gentle a soul to do it. The thought of his almost barbaric escape and the permanent stain on his soul is just too much for him to bear. But then by two minutes and 45 seconds, the boys plan an escape, codename Dancy Party Time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having such a good time with you. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> great. It's, it's so great. Hey, uh, you know, you know what? What? Um, since I, we've been here for a while, I didn't really get to practice my dancing skills. Maybe you and I should dance together. It's such a great idea. You're so romantic. Yes, I guess. <laughs> Let's dance. Let's do this. Oh, oh this is so nice. Don't you think that we're having a really good dancing party time? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm totally down for this dancing party tonight. <laughs> <gasps> what the? Oh! Oh, this is for seeing you! Oh, I'm sad! How could you, how could you do that to them? <gasps> Afterwards, they celebrate their freedom in a warehouse dance party, returning to their chipper selves. But wait, are they all okay? The flash at the end of the video suggests that perhaps Baro is struggling with the murder he had to commit to free his bandmates. While the rest of them are enjoying their dancing party time tonight, Baro is deeply struggling with what he's done. Baro, you're my hero, man. You're my hero. <laughs> Now there really isn't a predominant dance move in this video, but we did notice that Belasa is suffering from the growing epidemic that we've been seeing in a lot of K-pop videos lately, namely the epidemic of air punches. Here we see not one, but two slow motion air punches. Shiny Sherlock, Super Junior Zacha, and New Kisses Neverland. This growing epidemic of slow motion air punches becoming a problem. My new K-pop dance studio is a great success. Side note, whatever happened to Belasa's like super cute sprout dance? I noticed it in Beautiful Target and it's kind of one of those like cute things they always do, but it, it didn't come up in this video and I felt a little bit sad about it. As for the English of the song, we give this a... The worst English in the history of a K-pop song ever out of five. This, this is such incomprehensible nonsense that I don't even know where to begin. And it's not like an SM kind of fantastic, elastic, do it baby, love crash kind of thing. Which, even though they sound silly, are words that are thrown in there to kind of try to sound cool for an effect. Sure, that sounds silly, but at least we understand what they're trying to do there. This though, this is a bunch of phrases and words that are actually trying to convey a meaning to express emotions, but but all I can hear is nonsense. Oh god, I feel so bad saying that. Jin Young wrote the lyrics himself, supposedly. And so I kind of feel like a parent who just got a picture from their kid. Oh hey Susie, welcome home from school! I wanted to tell you that I drew you a picture and it's really good. I'm so good at drawing. I want you to show all your friends. Okay, let me see it. said it was so good. Okay, do you like it? It's great! Okay, bye dad! Let's it's great! Go, go, go play in your room! Jeez. 
Jeez. Oh. Oh. Must destroy all evidence of this monstrosity. Now, I'd be heartless to do something like that. And so I kind of feel the same way here. I feel like I can't really talk about the lyrics here as much as I would regularly. But let's just for the sake of make-believe pretend that I didn't know that he wrote the lyrics. Hello, I am an actor. I am practicing my acting skills. The following is me acting and not real life. Oh, wow. What is this? English lyrics in the K-pop song? Let me investigate and see what they say. Mm-hmm. Baby, I'm sorry. We got the better. What? You, you got the better... What? You can't end your sentences like that. Dancing party time, dancing party tonight? Wow, I didn't know that Borat was writing these lyrics. Wowie wow, a very nice dancing party time tonight. That was my best Borat impersonation. I have the Borat mustache. Got you my lonely love tonight. What does that even mean? I mean, what is... What is lonely love tonight? What? This is ridiculous. Baby in a city light, in a city love light. I can't even read this anymore. This isn't making any sense. <laughs> wow, that actor was a terrible jerk. I'm glad that I don't feel the same way about that song. Last week we asked you whose long Rapunzel-like hair you preferred. GD's in Fantastic Baby or Taman's in Sherlock. And the winner was GD by like a lot. But I think maybe the votes were skewed after everyone seeing the very traumatic picture of Simon dressed up like Taman. So you under me tell. For this week's gibberish edition, we ask you which fun but nonsensical K-pop song you preferred. But lost his baby, I'm sorry. Or Tiara's Ya yeah, Ya yeah, Ya. Yeah. Tough choice. Leave your votes in the comments or in the Facebook poll and we'll announce the winners next week. Also, thanks to all the Belasa Raptors who voted for Belasa and got them to the top of the charts. If there's a video you want to see for next week's K-Pop Music Monday, head on over to ichikimchi.com slash K-Pop Charts and get voting. Lastly, don't forget to like and favor this video and to subscribe for more Music Mondays. Take it away, Spurgy.